Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 8. So, uh, till now we have discussed about uh, the uh, till now we have discussed about a particle which is moving about a center of force okay. and thereafter we went into uh, the gravitational force motion means with there the particle was moving in on a curvilinear path about the center of a force where the force was directed toward the fixed point O okay, and we are taking the gravitational force means this force is described by minus mu by r square. Okay. So, in this assumption what we have done that we have assumed this to be the which is the center of attraction to be fixed the center of attraction is fixed. Okay. The particle is moving so this will call as the one body problem. Now the situation is we have the two body problem in which I have a reference frame say the x y and there are two bodies. means the two particles two body problem also this is called the two particle system basically whenever we are discussing we are discussing about a particle remember that Newton's law it is applicable to particle and it so happens that once we apply to a system of particles it gets reduced to the same format as uh, the one particle system and therefore we quite often we uh, assume body to be a particle and work with the system. So, here we will assume that this is the radius vector r 1 to the particle m 1 and this is the radius vector r 2 to the particle m 2. And this is point O. So, x y this is the initial frame. But it is not necessary that uh, this is only uh, a two dimensional one this can be x this can look like this x y and z and we have two particles here which is m 1 and m 2 this is the r 2 vector r 1 vector and another vector is directed. So, this vector we are writing as r 1 2 means it is a directed from 1 to 2. So, r 1 2 this will be written as r 2 minus r 1 and this is the standard notation I will be using quite often. So, here if I write that r 1 2 means it is a going from 1 to 2 okay. therefore, the vector becomes r 2 minus r 1 this is logical. Okay. So, here it is a only x y plane or you say x y z it does not depend on that you can take x y z or either this here it looks like this is a planar case and here it looks like that this is not a this in three dimensional plane, but the motion will be a planar one only it will be confined to a plane as we are going to uh, get the result. So, what we are interested in here finding the properties of motion. This is our objective. So, we start with the uh, Newton's law for working out this problem 
and uh, Newton's law as you know this is applicable only an in inertial reference frame they are, this we cannot apply to uh, non inertial reference frame. So, therefore, uh, starting with the first particle motion we can write as m 1 times d a square r 1 by d t a square and the force of acting on this particle will be m 1 m 2 g divided by r 1 2 this is also r 1 2 or either here in this place r 1 2 magnitude whole cube times r 1 2 this vector. So, where the force is directed on this particle m 1 it is a directed here along this direction ok. It is a I will show by some other color this is directed along this direction for the particle m 1 ok force is there. So, under that it is a moving. So, this is our equation number A. Similarly, for the second particle we can write that m 2 times d a square r 2 by d t a square this will be m 1 m 2 g divided by r 1 2 whole cube because the distance between these two particles. So, so this we are doing under the mutual gravitational force. this description is for mutual gravitational force. So, here m 1 m 2 g r 1 2 whole cube which is the distance between this and this ok. Now, in which direction this force is being applied? So, on m 2 the force will be acting in the opposite direction it is a acting here along this. So, here this will come with a minus sign. So, we have to apply here a minus sign. So, this is our equation number B. So, adding A and B this gives us m 1 times d a square r 1 by d t a square r 2 by d t a square and the right hand side if you add so th these are the same term. So, that gets equal to 0. So, this equation we can little rewrite as integrating equation d this is a constant a constant vector and let us indicate this by a. Ok, next we rewrite it as ok. If you differentiate you will get this quantity because the masses are fixed. So, from here we get where b is another constant vector now going back here in this place so if we look here in this place this is the origin and this is the mass m 1 
and m2 so if you know the definition of the center of mass so the center of mass definition is m1 plus m2 rcm this will be equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 so you can see here in this place that this is nothing but this equation can be written as m1 plus m2 times rcm this equal to at plus b so what does this imply this rcm is equal to a divided by m1 plus m2 t plus b divided by m1 plus m2 So, this says that the center of mass changes linearly with time. Okay. Or better we can have a look here in this part and this part. So, this part we can rewrite as d by d t m1 r1 plus m2 r2 is m1 plus m2 times rcm equal to a and this implies m1 and plus m2 if we write as m so d by dt so this can be written as m1 plus m2 we will have to write in the next line we can write this because the masses are constant so we can take it outside so we are using this fact m1 r1 this expression we are inserting here in this place okay so if we insert we get it like this m1 r1 times drcm by dt this equal to a means it's a right hand side is a constant vector. So, this implies that v center of mass velocity of the center of mass this equal to a divided by m where m equal to m 1 plus m 2. So, velocity of the center of mass is a constant vector means it is a mo moving in a particular direction. So, it is a moving along that direction a, it will not change the direction. So, a system of particles free from external force as you know e, what in the Newton's law we have learned that a system of particles until unless or either a particle until unless acted upon by external force it will not change its direction or the state of motion. Okay. So, this is what we have learned there. So, here in this case the we have the two particle system you can consider two particles are there, but it is a constituting, constituting one system and the forces are acting which are mutually acting on each other. So, there is no external force on the two particles, there is nothing external force, okay. whatever is there it will count as the internal force mutual gravitational force. So, it is free from the external force and therefore, it is the system of particle it is a it is a center of mass it is a going to move at a constant velocity means it is not going to change its direction. Okay. So, this is the property we are getting here. So, now coming to the conclusion what we can tell that the system of particles even in the case you can extend it to the three particle system and you will get the same result or in particle system you are going to get the same result. So, this says that the system of particles if it is free from the external force. So, the center of mass moves at a constant velocity. Okay. So, this 
So, here if you look back in this equation, now we have this constant and this constant. So, this is a vector, this is also a vector. So, total number of 3 constants are involved here because this is a vector. So, 3 plus 3 total in this 2, okay. so total 6 constants are involved, 6 constants are involved. In the true particle system, once we have written these two equations, you know that once we integrate it, we will get three constants here. Uh, three constant for uh, total six constants. How? Because d a square r 1 by d t a square, if it is in three dimension, so this can be written as in matrix notation, this can be written as d a square x by d t a square d a square y by d t a square and d a square z by d t a square. So, we have a total of 3 terms here okay? and corresponding right hand terms are also there. So, if you integrate this constitutes one second order differential equation, this also constitutes one second order differential equation, this also constitutes one second order differential equation. So, with this two constants are involved, with this two constants are involved and with this also two constants are involved. So, total six constants are involved. So, six constants are involved with this, six constants are involved with this. So, total number of 12 constants are there. So, 12 constants are involved. Okay. So, out of that we have been able to identify these six constants and this is constant what we are identifying A and B, these are called the integrals of motion, integrals of motion. So, 6 we have identified, rest remains the 6. So, whether we will be able to identify all the six, 12 constants or not, it is a matter of time. So, over a period of time, you will come to know. So, I will not discuss all the things at this stage. Few of the things I will take it to the three body problem and then there we will discuss it. Okay. The next one. So, till now what we have got that the center of mass of two body system moves with constant velocity. The second one we are going to derive which will be which is the angular momenta okay and one more thing you can get from this place uh, see here in this place i will state one more thing that this is the total mass m Okay, so, m times v c m this is a constant. So, this is the total linear momenta of the system linear momenta of the system. Here in this place it is a very much visible m 1 times d r 1 by d t m 2 times d r by dr 2 divided by dt. So, this is the linear momentum of first particle first particle and this one is the linear momentum of second 
second particle. So, adding this two momentum, linear momentum, so we call it momenta. So, momenta of the system, this is going to be a constant. So, why this is a constant? Because this two particle system, it is a free from external force. If any external force is acting on the system, then this will no longer be valid. Okay. So, the second one will be the angular momenta of a system of two particles is constant and this we are going to work out. Okay. So, this is already done and this we are going to do now. So, multiply equation A and B by R 1 and R 2, take the cross product. So, taking cross product with respect to R 1 and R 2 of equations A and B respectively. So, this gives us R 1 cross this is plus R 1 cross m 1 times m 2 times r 1 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube. We will number the equation and this is f So, this we are obtaining from equation a and this we are obtaining from equation b from equation a from equation b. So, R 2 times d t a square this equal to minus R 2 cross m 1 m 2 R 1 2 divided by R 1 2 whole cube this is h. Now, add both of them adding equations g and h. So, that will give us and here uh, we, we will take it outside d a square by d t a square and write it this way m 1 r 1 plus m 2 r 2. Okay. So, if we add it for uh, we have missed we have missed the term r 1 cross r 2 we are missing here. So, we have to add that We will go to the next page. Adding equation G and H that gives us R 1 cross. Let us go systematically d t a square plus R 2 times R 2 cross m 2 times d a square r 2 d t a square this equal to g m 1 m 2 this will come out r 1 2 whole cube also this will come out and here this particular thing we are taking as common and rest other things will be there. So, 
So, this will be R 1 minus R 2 R 1 cross R 1 2. So, R 1 2 also will take it outside. So, this is ok. So, if, uh, R 1 minus R 2 cross R 1 2. We rewrite it. So, this quantity is nothing but minus R 1 2. So, this becomes G m 1 m 2 divided by R 1 2 whole q R 1 2 cross R 1 2. So, this equal to 0 vector and left hand side we have to process. So, left hand side we will process it here. So, this becomes m 1 times already we have done this kind of uh, manipulation. So, there is nothing uh, great in this. So, we can write this as d by d t m 1 times r 1 cross d r 1 by d t plus m 2 times r 2 cross d r 2 by d t. So, this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. So, uh, if you remember we have worked out this particular thing earlier. So, this d by d t r 1 cross d r 1 by d t this simply gets reduced to you can see that this will be d r 1 by d t cross d r 1 by d t and plus r 1 cross d a square r 1 by d t a square. So, this gets cancelled out and we are left with this. So, we recover the original thing. So, therefore, we can write this as d by d t m 1 times r 1 cross v 1 plus m 2 times r 2 cross v 2 and on the right hand side this is a 0 vector or simply we write this as 0 also. So, once we integrate it, so this is r 1 cross m 1 v 1 plus r 2 cross m 2 v 2 this is a constant and let us say this constant we write as c. So, what this quantity is? This quantity will write as h 1, this quantity will write as h 2, this is h 1 and this is h 2, this is equal to c. So, your h 1 is angular momentum of particle 1 and S 2 is angular momentum of of particle 2. Okay. So, this we can summarize as h equal to c that means, the angular momenta of the system it is a constant angular momenta of the two particle system it is a constant. Okay, so, this was the second property we have written angular momenta of the system of two particles is constant. Okay. So, uh, similarly we can uh, look into the one more thing we have to discuss. So, here how many constants are involved? This is in the x y z inertial frame. So, this 
so x y z inertial frame so this will have three components three components and this is another this c this overhead arrow this is another constant which is the constant of integral of uh, constant of integration of the motion or call the uh, integral of the motion okay earlier term we have used here integrals of motion okay so added to this there is one more term now the which is c so overall we have a b and c these are the integrals of motion of motion and each one is of dimension 3 this is of dimension 3 and this is also of dimension 3 so that total makes nine integrals so we have been able to identify nine integrals of motion the rest remaining are three so three more we have to determine but whether we can do that or not we are not still sure now we go to the third property so we have done one and now this second one is done so the third property energy of the system is constant so already we have observed for the central force motion that the energy of the system is conserved so here in two particle system also the energy remains conserved what is the reason that there is no external force acting on the system and here we are not assuming that inside there is heat dissipation or there is vibration because of vibration some energy is getting in form of the heat or any any kind of things we are just assuming to be absent and the system is free from the external force and therefore the system uh, energy is bound to be conserved which is the principle of conservation of energy so again we start with the uh, equation a and b but this time we take the dot product with r1 and r2 okay so taking equation a and b with respect to dr1 dt and dr2 by dt respectively if we do this so the equation and adding and adding so from equation 1 we will have dr1 by dt dot m1 times d square r by dt square this is r1 and adding this with 2 by dt dt square and on the right hand side we will have dr1 by dt dot r1 times g m1 m2 divided by r1 to whole cube okay one more term this comes with minus sign dr2 by dt see here the dot product uh, 
is commutative in nature. So, we can write it on our either side it does not matter times g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube. So, we need to go to the next page or either we can work here little bit and then go to the next page. So, working out this particular part See what we have done this particular part from here to here, okay. This we are writing like this. If you differentiate this, let us differentiate only this part. And 1 by 2 we will introduce here. So, if I differentiate only this part, I will mark this. differentiating only this part. So, what it will appear as m 1 d a square r 1 by d t a square dot d r 1 by d t plus m 1 d r 1 by d t dot d a square r 1 by d t a square. So, you can see that this is nothing but 2 m 1 times because the dot product is commutative in nature. So, we can write it like this okay. and if we divide by 1 by 2. So, this 2 will cancel out and we get the original term which is present here. Okay. So, similarly this term is written here in this place divided by 1 by 2. Okay. Rest right hand side we have to work out. So, on the right hand side we can take out g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube and here we are left with d r 1 by d t dot r 1 minus d r 2 by d t dot r 2. <coughs> okay, uh, thereafter some manipulation is there and if we do this, we will be able to solve this problem. Okay, so, uh, here uh, we have worked out. So, uh, on the right hand side we have this equation, on the left hand side this equation, but here we have missed out the term this r 1 2. On the right hand side this r 1 2 is there. In the original equation if you go back and look into this, here r 1 2 is present and in this place r 1 2 we have missed out this r 1 2 is also here in this place which we have missed out. Okay. So, r 1 2 is here okay. therefore, once we work it out. So, we need to write there r 1 2 this is r 1 2 and r 1 2. So, we have missed out wherever we have to insert all those places. Now, we can reorganize it. So, if we reorganize it this will the right hand side we are reorganizing m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube and this becomes d r 1 by d t minus d r 2 by d t dot r 1 2. So, right hand side gets reduced to m 1 by m 2 r 1 2 whole cube and this quantity is nothing but 
d by d t r 2 minus r 1 uh, r 1 minus r 2 is minus. So, we will write this as minus r 1 2 dot r 1 2. So, finally, we summarize here into the right hand side r 2 whole cube this will come with a minus sign here and this is r 1 2 dot r 1 2. Okay. We I this d by d t I have removed and placed a dot here in this place. Okay. Now, we can go to the next page and the left hand side we can rewrite So, the left hand side is 1 by 2 times as written here in this place m 1 times v 1 dot v 1 plus m 2 times v 2 dot v 2 and on the right hand side then we have minus g times m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole q times d by d t r 1 2 dot r 1 2. Okay, this part we have copied there and on the left hand side we have this part. So, the left hand side then becomes 1 by 2 m 1 v 1 a square plus 1 by 2 m 2 v 2 a square on the right hand side we have to work out r 1 2 whole cube r 1 2 dot times r 1 2. So, d by d t r 1 2 dot r 1 2 this will be nothing but 2 times r 1 2 dot r 1 2. So, we utilize this property here in this place and rewrite this as 1 by 2 g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube and then this part this part we can rewrite as this is 2 times r 1 2 dot this equal to and the, on the right hand side we will have d by d t r 1 2 whole square which is nothing but 2 d okay. uh, this is ok we can, we can put it here in this format we are taking the dot product of this. So, this becomes r 1 2 whole square. So, we can replace this by 1 by 2 d by d t r 1 2 whole square. So, and thereafter we simplify it. So, this is g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 whole cube and this is 2 r 1 2 times d r 1 2 divided by d t and 1 by 2 this is multiplied by 1 by 2. So, minus uh, one, 2 2 cancels out and we get here minus g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 a square d r 1 2 by d t and we explore if there is any possibility of further rewriting the right hand side. Suppose, we utilize write it like this okay. and then we check this term. We check this term by expanding. So, we will see that this is g m 1 m 2 and this becomes r 1 2 whole square with minus sign 
d r 1 2 by d t. So, this is nothing but the term here which is present. So, therefore, and on the left hand side we have uh, missed out another part this is 1 by 2 d by d t. Okay. So, uh, we need to write here d by d t also d by d t d by d t and d by d t. So, this d by d t d y d t which was present here this we were missing. So, I have added that. So, with that our equation looks like this. Now, we can integrate it and if we integrate it we get it in this format 1 by 2 m. Okay. So, this is minus and this gets plus sign here this minus is el eliminated once we differentiate this. So, minus sign will appear which is given here. So, what we get here m 1 this is v 1 square plus 1 by 2 this is m 2 v 2 a square this becomes then g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 and plus e which is the constant of integration. So, the left hand side is the kinetic energy of the two particles. So, going to the next page. So, 1 by 2 m 1 v 1 a square plus 1 by 2 m 2 v 2 a square okay. and minus or we can write here as plus minus g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 okay, see on this side g m 1 m 2 divided by r 1 2 this equal to e. So, this is kinetic energy of the two particles and this is potential energy mutual potential energy of these two particles. and this we are writing as a E which is a constant. Okay. So, what it says that kinetic energy plus potential energy of this two particle system this equal to E is a constant. That means, total energy of the system is conserved. So, this is the mutual potential energy, but this is your this V this is written in terms of V 1 is nothing but d r 1 by d t. So, this is an inertial frame. Okay, so, the inertial frame what is the linear velocity and in the inertial frame this is another linear velocity of the second particle. So, th this constitutes your absolute kinetic energy and this potential energy is due to the mutual proximity how close they are. So, it depend on that. Okay. So, all together these three terms added together it will remain as a constant. So, this is the third part we were looking for that the total energy of the system remains conserved. So, we uh, stop at this stage and uh, we will continue in the uh, next lecture. So, finally, if, uh, let us conclude it that kind kinetic energy is written as T and potential energy is written as U 
So, T plus u this equal to E and later on we will find the uh, find description for this also. So, we will uh, discuss about this. So, this is another constant of integral constant of integral, but this is a scalar quantity because this is energy term. So, how many terms we have got A, B, C these are the vectors and E. So, this is 3, this, this is 3, this is 3 and this is 1. So, total of 10 constants of integral integrals we have identified. Rest 2, rest 2 is still we do not know. So, we will explore whether this can be solved or not solved. So, these are the two missing integrals still. So, what we have done we were looking for closed form solution of the equation of motion of these two particles, two particle system we had and we were looking for the closed form solution. Obviously, if you are uh, given the differential equation for these two particles and the initial conditions are given. So, you can propagate the system state okay, if the initial conditions are known. So, there is no problem in that, but that we are not doing. What we are doing here? We are trying to look for closed form solution. Okay. We are not trying to do it numerically. Okay. So, in that effort we are just able to identify till now 10 constants rest 2 are still missing. So, once I take up the case for the 3 particle system. So, at that time we will discuss it again. Okay. So, thank you very much for listening and uh, I uh, while discussing uh, some terms uh, always uh, um, say if, uh, sometimes we are dropping out like the this d, d by d t was uh, dropped out from this place uh, initially it was missing here. So, this kind of uh, error it creeps in while discussing because the attention gets diverted and copying from one place to another place. Okay. So, but of course, uh, once it comes to the final conclusion I am correcting all the time uh, as it is necessary not only necessary, but uh, automatically if those terms are missing. So, we will not get the result. So, uh, uh, hopefully, while you uh, read uh, even in the future this kind of um, uh, error may creep in and uh, so, always look for the letter on uh, I keep correcting whenever the errors are creeping in. So, I keep correcting them uh, one by one. So, thank you very much for listening and uh, uh, next lecture we will take up uh, the new topic and also in the future we will uh, solve some new problems. So, that not only the theory, but you are also acquainted with uh, uh, how to solve the uh, different uh, this uh, space flight mechanics related problems. Thank you very much.